Let's consider the strain displacement relations for shear strains. I'll go back to my edge aligned along the x direction, but now I'm looking at displacements in the y direction also. So this, uh, this point will displace by an amount v in the y direction, so this is the y direction. And this will displace by an amount v plus delta v in the y direction. After, after I apply my loads, um, that, you know, this will look like that. So it's moved, you know, it's elongated by delta u in the x direction, and it's moved up by an amount delta v in the y direction. And you'll get a skewing, and, you know, earlier we called the, uh, the skewing angle theta. It's the same thing. Tan theta is then just that, uh, divided by that, okay? And I can divide through by delta x, and you know, in the numerator I'll get delta v over delta x, and the denominator I'll get that. Then I look in the limit as delta x tends to zero, and these become, you know, I can replace them with partial derivatives. So I'll get tan theta is partial v partial x in the numerator, and then here I'll get partial u, partial x. I'll say that, you know, d, d u dx is much less than one, and that's a normal strain. So, you know, that's the normal strain is much less than one. I'll also say that the skewing theta is much less than one. That means that essentially what I'm saying is that, you know, dv dx is much less than one or or tan theta is, you know, is very small. And because, you know, this implies that tan theta is very small, I can replace tan theta by just theta. And so tan theta becomes theta, and I can knock out this term due to that assumption, and I'll just get this over here. And this is, this essentially I'm assuming that the strains are small. This is a normal strain that's related to the shear strain. So the assumption embedded in, the, in this relation is that I have small strains, both for normal and shear. Now, we are interested if you, uh, you know, if I go back to a previous figure that I had, uh, I looked at this Q angle theta. We have a corresponding skew angle lambda here, and you may recall that the engineering shear strain is the you know is the sum of those two. So let's take a look at a corresponding expression for lambda. In that case, I'm looking at an edge aligned in the y direction, and it's going to elongate by delta v in the y direction, um, and also this you know this. Uh, this corner is going to move with respect to this corner in the x direction, and that amount is going to be um, delta u. And if I if I go through and you know do the same kind of um, development as I did on for um, for theta, I'll get this expression for lambda du dy. And you can you know intuitively see that if the gradient of u is you know if I increase the gradient of u in the y direction, it means that the u here will be more different than the u here, and so lambda will increase. And the engineering shear strain is theta plus lambda, so I get I get that uh, term here, and then the previous term I had was dv dx. So I'll get the cross cross derivatives, and the assumption embedded is that. It's, it's the strains are small. Similarly, I'll get uh, for the, the engineering shear strain in the yz plane, uh, it's a corresponding expression, and in the zx plane. This gives me three additional relations uh, when I consider the, the shear strain, but I haven't introduced any new variables. So that actually closes the equation set. 
I should mention that, you know, these derivations have a lot of overlap with the derivations that uh, I cover in the big ideas in fluids. Um, one main difference is that there, you know, one is talking about the strain rates because a fluid particle deforms continuously when you apply a force on it. And so now we have, you know, uh, the equation set that is closed, and I'll summarize the equation set in the pre-analysis for the bike crank, and you know, then we'll go and solve the, uh, the structural response of the bike crank in ANSYS. We'll, and essentially, you know, it's using um, the same set of equations when we, are, when we do the bolted flange example also. And a lot of the static structural um, examples that you do in, you know, in ANSYS or another uh, finite element analysis tool are going to use these, e these set of equations or some variation of it. So these equations are very important.